Hey, good morning. Happy Thursday to you. Welcome to our weekly update. And we're going to start off with a photo of the day. This one was taken by Mark Langenberg. And that is a gorgeous picture. Shane, do you have any idea where Mark took this picture? He told me and I forget. Aha. So it was taken in the land of I forget. Um, I'm really hoping those flowers are not forget-me-nots because we will have really disappointed them. Anyway, that is a beautiful picture wherever it was taken. And uh, Mark, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, announcements. Coming up Sunday, we're going to be continuing on our series called Live Like Mountain Folk, looking at the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus preached. And this week, we're going to be looking, uh, starting at Matthew 5.33, where Jesus talks about uh, oath-taking, uh, which is kind of an interesting topic. I don't know that in our culture, we do a lot of oath-taking. It was much more prevalent in Jesus' culture in that time. But I think there are some enduring principles that, that do speak to us. So we're going to look at that this week. Um, also, by the way, I'm wondering, did any of you actually try making vinegar pie? Last Sunday, I showed you this old pioneer recipe for vinegar pie that supposedly tastes kind of like an apple pie. I'm still not believing that, but I'm just curious if any of you were curious enough to uh, try making a vinegar pie. If you did, let me know and let me know how it tasted. That would be fascinating. Okay, then coming up uh, this Saturday night, we've got The Gathering. This has been sponsored by the Surf Ministry. They do this on a monthly basis, isn't it? Yeah, yeah they do it monthly. And so this Saturday night at 6 p.m., they're going to be in the DCC Auditorium. And George Crabb is going to be interviewing Miles Houston. And uh, Miles has uh, quite the story, uh, both of what he has had to overcome in life and God's grace to him in that process. And uh, there's kind of a cool event coming up in Miles' life that I'm pretty sure he's going to share. And, uh, but I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'll let him tell you about that. And then there's some music as well. Uh, Shane, are you leading the music? I believe I am. Shane is probably doing the music, so uh, that should be a good time. So uh, this Saturday night, 6 p.m. in the auditorium for the gathering. And then some family fun is coming up. Pastor Britt has got uh, a plan in the works, and this is for all families who have children that are in grade five or younger. And I suppose if you've got some kids that are older, but you also have kids that are younger, we can probably work that out. You could check with Pastor Britt in the office and see how that works. But if you've got those younger kids, grade, grade five and below, this is an evening for you. It's going to be on, or an afternoon, I should say. It's going to be on Saturday, June 12th from 2 to 4 p.m. And we're taking over the Squim YMCA. All of the facilities, the, the pool, the hot tub, the courts, all of it is going to be open to us. And so you come on down with your families and just have a really fun time. Uh, there's even going to be a food truck on site for meals. And everything is free, food included. So bring the kids down, bring their swim trunks and, you know, bring a basketball and, and come on down, plan for a really fun afternoon and, uh, and bring your appetite. And uh, this is also open to friends of yours. If you have another family that maybe they don't go to DCC, but they've got kids that are in this age bracket, invite them to come along as well. We would like to reach out to meet them and welcome them. So that's coming up on June 12th. Make plans for that. And you do need to RSVP for it. Uh, there is a banner that should be up on our website at dcchurch.org, or you can contact the church office. But we do need to have some idea ahead of time as to how many people are going to be there. So if you could do that, that would really help us out. And then, speaking of kids, now we're going to talk about older kids. We have nine high school seniors that are graduating this year. And of course, this has been a very strange year to be a high school senior. And uh, we would like to bless these grads. And so we're taking up a collection for them, a financial collection over the next two weeks. And if you would like to be part of that, to just uh, gift and bless these kids who've had a pretty challenging year, um, all you have to do, if you want to write a check, you can send a check to the church and just be sure that you mark in the memo line that it is for the senior gift. You can also do this online. Go to dcchurch.org and uh, there will be a 
donate button there, or if you go to the donate section with the drop down menu, you can select senior gift to designate it. And uh, let's just make this a, a really fun thing that we do for our graduating seniors this year. All right, back at the other end of the spectrum, we've gone from high school seniors all the way back to nursery. Our nursery is about to open up, the new remodeled nursery. And uh, something that we need is we need some more helpers in there. And so if you would be willing to be put on a schedule, it's a rotating schedule, so nobody does it every week or all the time, but uh, share the load, um, we could really use some adults to help us staff the nursery. And this is such a ministry to young parents, to know that they can come to church and have some time to just sit and worship and uh, know that someone else is taking care of the kids. So if you could help out with that, if you're interested in helping out with that, would you please contact the church office? All right, a thought for the day. This comes out of Colossians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Paul says, Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Okay, so why am I talking about this verse about lying for a Thursday morning thought? Well, it really ties into what we're going to talk about on Sunday where Jesus talked about taking oaths. And he said, just let your yes be yes and your no, no. It, it, it has to do with honesty. And here we see the Apostle Paul writing about honesty as well, just very explicitly saying, don't lie to each other. Which, um, I just love how down to earth Paul's letters were. Paul wrote to real people who had real flaws. Uh, they were part of God's family. He's writing to the church, but they were works in progress, as are most of us. And apparently, shading the truth or just telling a big fat one was one of the things that was a, a problem at times within their church fellowship. Enough so that Paul says, stop doing that. Don't lie to each other. Uh, you've put off that old way of life, that way of manipulating others for yourself. Uh, you've put on a new self that, that is being renewed in the image of its creator. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. We all have these things that we struggle with. Uh, one of the uh, revelations to me, a uh, number of years ago, my mom, uh, who was nigh unto a saint. She was a woman that loved the Lord with all of her heart. She loved people. She gave herself to ministry. Um, I, I have nothing but good things to say about my mom. But one day, um, I was a young adult. We got talking about growing up and challenges. And, and mom confided in me that when she had been a girl, she had had quite a problem with lying. Somewhere in growing up, it suddenly dawned on her that she could uh, not tell the truth and she could get away with stuff. And uh, that was something that God had dealt with her on and, uh, and, and that she had left that behind long ago in her childhood. But it just struck me that here was someone that I had tremendous respect for and yet she was just a person. She had these areas to grow as well. And so I would just encourage you, I don't know what your area may be, but we all have them. And maybe it's this area of telling the truth. And maybe when the chips are down, you find it kind of easy to avoid saying what really happened. Um, I just want to encourage you that speaking the truth is a very practical way that we love others. So uh, speak the truth and love others doing that. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are truth. You came and you spoke truth to us. You call us to walk in the truth, to walk in the light. And I pray, Lord, that today we would walk in your light. And I pray that if we are confronted with areas where we are tempted to lie, to hide the truth, Lord, I just pray you'd bring these words, your words, back to our minds, that we would speak the truth that we would love others with truth. And so we give this day to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that is going to wrap us up for today. I trust you have a great weekend and that part of it will be we all get together on Sunday for church, either online or in person. And until then, be blessed.